Welcome to Exquisite. In this video, I will quickly show you how to read data from text files in MATLAB. This is one of the first things someone should learn when writing programs in a particular language. This is because there is usually a need to do so. The MATLAB function we will be using is named TextScan. It is used to fetch data from a text file into the MATLAB environment. To use the text scan function, we must first use the fopen function to open the text file which we want to fetch data from. So in line 1 of the program, we type fopen as shown. And inside the bracket, we can provide some information, which are usually called arguments. The first argument is the file name. That is the name of the file from which we want to fetch the data. Now let's have a look at the sample file which we will be using for illustration. The file is named, OSGF 001 std It is stored in this folder named, Program. To keep things easy, we will later save the program in this same folder. Now let's open the file to have a look at the data inside of it. That is how it looks. Note that we are only using this particular file for purpose of illustration. You can use your own data files in whatever different format they are. You only have to specify things as we will do in this video. Back to our sample data file. Data in this file has two columns. The first column contains the time in hours, running from 0 to 23 while the second column contains corresponding values of a parameter which we call tech, for short. Your data could be much bigger, and in so many columns. Similar procedure illustrated here should be followed. In case you want to practice with this particular data file, we have stored it alongside the final MATLAB program at the site displayed on the screen, and in the description section of this video on YouTube from where you can download and practice with it. So let's get back to our MATLAB code. Inside the bracket, we will put the name of the file. That is, OSGF 001 std Note that the file name is usually put in quotes, because it is a string. The other arguments are optional, we don't need them here. Next, we need a name to identify any file we open so that we can use this name to identify the file subsequently. For this illustration, let's use the name, FID to identify the file that will be opened by line 1 of the code. You can use a name of your choice. So we type, FID equals whatever we had in line 1 of the code, like that. Next, we use the text scan function to fetch the data in that file. In line 2 of the program, we type, text scan, as shown. Inside the bracket, we type the arguments. The first argument is whatever name we use to identify the file that has been opened by the fopen function. In our case, we used FID. The second argument is the format of data in the file. There are different data formats, but for beginners, I will advise you not to bother about them all. Just use %f for a column that contains numeric data, and %s for a column that contains characters that are not numeric. In our illustration, we have two columns of numeric data, so the format is %f, %f, as shown in line 2 of the code. If we had five columns of numeric data, then we should have rather typed %f, repeated five times as shown. Note that commas are usually used to separate the arguments. So, when you type a comma inside that bracket, the program uses it to know that next to it is a different argument. The same thing goes for other arguments that may need to be included. There are other optional arguments which can be used. I will tell you about them in subsequent videos. But for now, our program is ready, and it will work well in the stage we have it now. So let's save it before we run it. For this first example, let's save it in the same location where we have the data file. That is, in the folder named Program. We just click on this Save As icon. Make sure the folder is where we want to save it. That is, Program. Then we give it a name. I choose to use Pro1. You can use a name of your choice. By default, 
MATLAB will select to save it as a MATLAB code file. And finally, we click save, and the program is saved. Now, just before we run the program, we should assign a name to the data which will be fetched from the file. Let's call it, A. You can use a name of your choice. So we say, A, is equal to whatever we had on the second line. The reason to do this is that when the program fetches data from the file, it will name it, A. And so whenever we want to refer to that data, we can simply refer to it as, A. Finally, we run the program by clicking on that green button. When we do so, the program automatically fetches data from that file into the MATLAB environment, and names the data as, A. We can confirm that the data is correctly fetched by typing, A, on the command window, and hitting the Enter key. Information about the data in the file should be displayed as shown. It tells us that, A, contains two columns of data, and that each of the two columns contain 24 entries. If you want to see exactly the data as they are in the file, then use the cell to mat function to convert data contained in, A, from cell to matrix structure. Just type, cell to mat, A, as shown and hit the enter key. The data contained in our file will now be displayed as shown. The entire 24 rows of data is displayed. It is not completely visible because of the limited space we have here. We can scroll up the data using this button, so that we can see the upper part of the data. If you get an error when you run your program, or if the information of data you receive is not the same as you have inside the data file, then it is usually one of the following problems. First check the value of FID in the workspace. If it is a negative value, like minus 1, then there is a problem there. The likely problem is that you may have not entered the file name correctly, and exactly as it is named. Check carefully. Capitalization, lower or upper cases, and spaces matter here. Or perhaps the program was not saved in the same folder as the data file. If however the value of FID is positive, then there is no problem with the first line. Check the second line. Check to ensure that you have correctly entered the comma the quotation signs, and the brackets. Congratulations, if you got the results as expected. You have just written a MATLAB program that automatically reads data from a text file. More lines can be subsequently added to the program, to process or analyze the data as desired. In the next video, I will show you how to read data files that may not be in the same folder as the MATLAB program and data files which may contain headings that are not part of the main data. See you then. If you like our videos, don't forget to click on the subscribe link. It is completely free, and lets you know when we upload new videos. Plus, it's your little way of promoting our channel. Thank you.